Okay, a very good morning. I am here at IIT Bombay and it is a beautiful campus out here and each time I come here it is a fascinating experience. Um, my name is Ravi Kodukula. I take care of learning and organization development at JP Morgan Chase, the India Global Service Center. Now, I am going to be spending uh, my uh, time with you over the next three and a half or hours uh, discussing with you and uh, taking you through some of my own personal experiences of having spent the last almost 25 plus years in organizations, more so in the corporate organizations like the JP Morgan Chase. When I talk about learning and organization development, I had this particular part of the business for the last about five years in JP Morgan and uh, before that with equally worthy brands and corporate organizations for the last about 15 years in the learning and development space. Now, while learning and development is a very sacred space, uh, obviously it is always a great place to be, particularly when you stand up and uh, deliver a package of knowledge, for example, to a good number of people who are at various stages of their own learning and doing. And it is a great feeling whenever I impart some knowledge, skills or process abilities and build those skills and knowledge in people that I lead in organizations like mine. The views that I am going to express over the next three and a half odd hours are going to be through my personal experiences and professional experiences in organizations like uh, JP Morgan. But the organization does not subscribe to some of these thoughts. So uh, the interactive dialogue that I am going to have with each one of us in this room, and when I say this room, I am not referring to where I am sitting, but I am referring to a host of the classrooms, the theater rooms, wherever you are in your own institutions. So that would be the mode of the conversation that I would like to have with us this morning. Now, I love my voice, but that doesn't mean everybody in this room really loves my voice because uh, as a training professional, we are trained to really use our voice to the best of our ability and communicate in a way that is convenient for me, of course, personally, and a host of others who are listening to me. And trainers most normally love talking. But I'm not going to do all the talking today. I would love this to be a conversation. I would love this to be a dialogue. I would like this to be as interactive as possible. In our terminology, and I'm going to throw a bit of a jargon, uh, you may note down some of these things through the next uh, kind of time that we're going to spend together. You may take down notes for whatever they are worth because I have this 224 and a half slide presentation, but I'm not going to show that to you because it's going to be worthless because as these days, are most normally a good number of you would say, who needs a white-haired uh, you know, person from a corporate organization when we have Google? So I'm sure whatever I'm going to share with you, you would always find on Google if you were to do some G search. Uh, people stop doing research these days, they do G search. So once you start doing your Google search, I'm sure you would find much and more about what I'm going to talk to you and share with you today. But what I'm going to share with you is going to come straight from my heart and through my own experiences of having spent my kind of life with uh, organizations, corporate organizations particularly. To start with, I think it would be a good idea for me to share with you that I wasn't born in the training, learning, development, organization development, and which is a larger part of what you would today know as in organizations as HR or human resources. But I was a person who started off with an organization called American Express, and I'm sure a lot of you would know the organization and the brand. It is a financial services company with a very large presence of being one of the biggest firms or biggest brands in credit cards and allied financial services. When I started off with American Express, I was 
uh, in card operations. I was not in training. I was not in human resources. I was in card operations. Perhaps even before we heard of call centers in India, I think I was one of the first call center agents or call center executives or representatives or whatever you would want to call. Not exactly in the same form as we know the call centers today. Call centers, the way we know them, or if you want to ascribe a, an, another name for this or another couple of names for this, one definitely is BPO or business process outsourcing or business process offshoring. And another name for many of the call centers, the way they evolved, and of course, today we don't call them call centers anymore. We also call them contact centers, for example. And uh, the other name that you could possibly see or have heard is called the ITES, or Information Technology Enabled Services. So when you look at this industry, which evolved or started evolving sometime during the early to mid-90s, I was a part of the early story that evolved. So with American Express in the card operations at the call center, uh, we used to call that the telephone service center. And from there on, where I spent about two and a half years, the next two and a half years I spent in American Express travel service. Now that was a big change for me. And I'm going to talk to you about change a little while later in a more detailed way and what that could possibly mean to all of us. And the first change that I have had in my life was to really look at how do I move and really look at some of the different processes and completely different business within American Express from credit cards to travel service. But I was always fascinated during those times by the amount and the kind of training American Express as a company parted, imparted to me and to a host of others like me. As a budding new young executive in a young economy, which at that time Dr. Manmohan Singh had opened up as the finance minister in the Congress government under P. V. Narasimha Rao as the prime minister. Some of you may not have been born at that time, but I'm sure you would know some of this history as um, how India really opened up in terms of a uh, wider economy. During those times, we were opening up FDI or uh, foreign direct investment in a small little way. And many of these multinational brands had started coming into India. And uh, I, I would think it's quite fortunate to be able to be a part of this entire growing industry. When I look at the way I transitioned from operations into training or learning or development, organization development, or whatsoever you would want to call it, I would love to believe I had this knack of an ability to communicate and communicate well. And obviously communication is one of the bigger skills and it's an ocean when we talk about leadership skills and leadership qualities. I'll talk about that as well a while later. So I'm going to talk to you a little while later about change and communication and how some of these skills are going to stand us and qualities that are going to stand us in good stead as we progress into our own careers and corporate lives, etc. As I was talking to you about my own journey, at that stage it was, I was very fascinated by the people who used to stand up and deliver a lecture, for example, just exactly the way I'm trying to do this uh, with a good number of you today. I was quite fascinated by the way they conducted themselves, the way they stood, the way they spoke, the way they used their entire persona and their style to be able to be impressive. That was one of the first triggers as to why I wanted to be in training, learning, development, etc. Now it wasn't an easy journey or easy transition because uh, my training head at that time would not believe that I can possibly do that job. But there is one quality that I thought I possessed, apart from my own ability to communicate, was persistence. And I'm going to talk to you about persistence as one of the leadership qualities as well a while later. So I'm going to talk to you, I'm, I'm just adding this up in the list of uh, leadership qualities that I'm going to talk to you about. So I'm going to talk to you first about change, then about communication. I've said that a little while ago. I'm just writing this for my own reference, and if I forget, which normally happens with white-haired folks like me, 
So please do remind me that I did tell you that I'm going to talk to you about them. And if I don't, I would count on you, the young folks, to uh, really remind me about this. And the third thing that I said I'll talk to you about is persistence. I'll come back to these three and a host of other qualities uh, of leaders and leadership in, in a while from now. But here's the deal, persistence. The reason why I say persistence was a quality that I thought I had practiced and possessed at that time was primarily because I had this dogged perspective that I can make a good trainer of myself. And I'm talking about almost 20 years ago. And I chased and chased my um, operations head and our training head. And finally, about a year later, he gave in. He said, OK, I think you can be here. He put me through a series of rigorous tests, like many of you uh, in your technical schools go through a lot of tests to prove your, your worth, you prove to, to, your, to your faculty, to your teachers, that uh, you are capable of doing some of these things. One of the critical tests that I still remember that I was put through was for me to stand up in front of uh, about 10 uh, people. And I was asked to deliver a training course for about half an hour. And I think uh, I had tough competition, but despite which I flew in through that particular uh, test with flying colors, and I was in the training space. Now, when I look back at those 20 years that I've spent in the training and learning and development space, I normally think about how people transition and change their careers and their lives and their roles. On a lighter note, I always say, when you can't do, you train. What that means in English is, I was probably a misfit in operations, so that's the reason they threw me out of operations into training. The next stage of training normally is when you can't train, you consult. So what that means is probably I'm headed towards consulting sometime in the future. But the idea is in corporate organizations like mine, I think we uh, do a lot of consulting in our roles every day in and day out. Consulting in a role like mine, for example, is for me to be able to meet with my internal customers and look at what they need from a issue or a challenge or a problem that they are facing, and then look at how I can possibly help my internal customers through that challenge and probably design and develop and deliver a solution uh, that would be best uh, fit for them. And the reason why I say I had learning and organization development is because learning is a fairly specific technical science. Whereas organization development, if you were to really look at some very classical and very simple definitions, is about how you identify an issue or a challenge that, may, that the organization may be facing, and then try and design and deliver a solution uh, to address that problem or an issue. Simply put, organization development is two things. Number one, fix what is not working through a solution that would be best fit in that situation. Or look at the future for the organization and prepare the organization to get to that stage. So let me give you an example. A corporate organization might face a problem like, hey, I'm not getting the right talent from technology institutions, and what should I do about that? So a typical solution, and I'm not saying this is the only solution, but a typical solution could be, how do we put the right kind of tests or right kind of assessments for each of the technology schools or the technical schools where a corporate organization might go and select people? How do we devise those tests or assessments? What should go into those assessments? What questions should be asked? How do we prepare our uh, questionnaires? How do we prepare the institutions so as that the students at institutions like yours, for example, are able to recognize some of these questions and are able to respond to them the way corporate organizations would like to have those answers, for example. The reason why I'm talking about the questions and answers is because of two reasons. Number one, you know what this means because you folks have been cracking examinations and tests all your life, and that is something that we uh, in academic institutions really cherish. So when you look at any of these questions 
and the way you would respond to those answers is primarily because corporate organizations would want the best of the talent in the corporations. So the questions are designed and devised in a way that you are able to best respond and the best responses are of course then taken into account and the selection made on the basis of that. So the idea is how do you then know which questions or what questions are asked and how do you go about responding to them. So those might be some of your first set of leadership qualities or leader qualities or qualities of a leader the way you would want to build and that I refer to as subject matter expertise and that is one of the hard skills or qualities that I am going to talk to you about. So I have talked about four things until now and I will keep adding to this list and I also know a good number of you would have seen the video that we circulated in which I talked about qualities of leaders. So the fourth thing that I talked about is subject matter expertise and I will come back to that in a while. Uh, perhaps I may not talk about this the way I know it so I would love to have you ask me any kind of thoughts or questions that you have in your mind so that I know that I am responding to those questions to the best of uh, how you would like to receive those responses. The three things that I talked to about in my video and I am going to cursorily refer to them a little while later not now in detail are integrity, proactiveness and taking responsibility or taking ownership. Now these are the three things that I talked about. Number one integrity, number two proactiveness and number three taking ownership. So those are the three things you would have heard me talk about in the video so let us see what you remember of them and what do you mean by them through your own personal examples of having spent uh, the 18 years that you have spent on the face of this earth, 18 plus years I would love to believe. I am 18 till I die so do not go by what you see on my, on my head. This is the new L'Oreal uh, shade of a dye. So uh, I am 18 till I die so I am going to be as responsive to you in your own language as much as possible hopefully. Uh, that is primarily also because I have a 16 year old son and a 14 year old daughter and at times I am able to be in tune with the language that they speak and but most of the time trust me I cannot understand what they talk about because their language is very cryptic in uh, say for example I am sure this is a very stupid example but they say papa ka lol ho gaya which essentially means I have been taken for a ride uh, that is what I would li like to understand. But of course there are such abbreviations and acronyms that they use which I do not have a clue of. But coming back here I think I was talking to you about subject matter expertise which is what you have learnt in your technology schools and how that needs to translate into your responses to the questions that corporations might ask you at the stage of selection. So we will come back to that as well. So in this entire rambling of what I have said over the last about 15 odd minutes I would think the three or four qualities that I talked to you about leadership, change, communication, persistence and subject matter expertise have held me in good stead over the last 25 odd years that I have been working with organizations. So I would like to take a pause here and see what thoughts do you have about what I may have discussed with you in the videos or what I may have spent time discussing with you over the last 15 minutes. And then we will take this conversation on. As I said I would love for this to be an interactive conversation. I would see which institution or which school technology school is going to be asking me questions. I have uh, this in front of me. So I know the first question is always the difficult question to ask uh, and there are no chocolates for the first question. Okay so here is the choice that I have. If you do not ask me questions I will ask you questions. 1013. I see a few of you, I see a lady in green uh, dupatta over her, over her head and a few, I see a, yeah that is the one, that is the one, yeah, do not hide behind the camera. So anybody who can respond to me, what does leadership mean to you? I am Megla of Kodiya Biotech from Nipko Shanek Engineering College. Uh, leadership is uh, taking the entire responsibility if I am given some job as a leader and we are working as a team, so the, the role of the leader is that uh, if in case the project uh, we are not able to complete, it is the responsibility of the leader to take the whole responsibility. If in case it has failed, 
then uh, if it was a success then the leader should be someone who should give the entire credit to his team and that is what leadership to me wonderful wonderful thank you very much okay mekna i think uh, what you are talking about is personal ownership and accountability uh, this is something that i've talked to you about in my video as well did you see the video by the way oh, yes sir i have seen the video okay wonderful so i'm sure your thoughts are also coming from the video so i'm glad you have seen the video and you have at least tried to recall some part of that video yes you're right the personal accountability is and personal ownership of a project that you take is critical is always important and to see to it that you whatever you have owned whatever you have taken as your job you completing that job is a very important thing to do as well and that tells people around you that you have been very diligent you have been persistent in completing uh, your job that you have taken wonderful thank you what else so let's go over to another center 1292 is our center and i see a lot of red chairs out there and of course a lot of people who have questions as well or thoughts yes gentlemen sir i think leadership is like uh, something uh, demonstration which is related to a countries uh, and in the society in which a, a man should play a role like a, he took his own responsibility so, so that uh, the society become a development uh, okay there's there's somebody else who wants to say um, the person in red shirt according to me leadership is something if you work in a team you have a knowledge of a quality of each and every person what's their strength and their weakness to fulfill the task of a company and uh, and other things also okay wonderful so you have talked to me about two or three things uh, the first person in blue who talked to me was about how you demonstrate some of the qualities in a society or in, for the betterment and development of a country so that i think definitely yes and what you talk to me anoop is a few qualities which are to do with how you know people in your team for example or the people around you wherever you are you could be demonstrating leadership not only in an organization or an institution like yours for example you could be demonstrating leadership there as well and you could be demonstrating leadership even in your society larger society or the family or the um, housing complex or wherever you live so those are a few of the situations where you can demonstrate leadership qualities and what i hear you saying is how you can possibly demonstrate leadership through knowing the people knowing the teams that you work with knowing their strengths knowing what they are good at knowing what they can be better at what is it that they do not possess what is it that they possess and use those strengths and qualities to the best of the benefit of your team as well as for the organization so very very good thoughts so my questions to the two of you then my next question so you know in the united states when they catch hold of a criminal uh, they the first things that they say is whatever you say or do will be used as evidence against you so since you have responded to my question so i'm going to use whatever you said as evidence against you so i want from the two of you or from anybody else in that room what are some of the experiences that you have had in your school life in your college life about demonstrating the uh, qualities that you just talked about for example if you worked in a project for example in the in the institution in the hostel in the school in the college i'm sure you would have worked on some projects maybe say coordinating the school annual event or the college annual festival so in some of these things how did you if you have an experience how did you put the qualities of knowing the strengths of your team members or teammates and how did that help you so i'm going to go back over to you the person in the red shirt actually last time we were working on a project uh, we on a presentation uh-huh. on a piezo PG, electric material and we have five members uh, we just i know one of my friend is good in searching in on net and, and i am weak in searching in net and i know his quality then i i give him, <coughs> give him work uh, to search uh, the materials and some of one of my friend is good in good in presentation 
and he can speak very clearly that then i then we take a part to give him a, to speak in front of a teacher wonderful thank you so you talked about two skills or two strengths one person is good at surfing the net even i am good at that i think everybody is good at that even my mother is very good at that these days in fact i recently gave her a smartphone and she now knows how to send me a whatsapp message so which is a huge technological advancement in my family by the way so you talked about one person whose strength is to be able to surf the net but you know surfing the net is also a very technical skill everybody cannot do that effectively and efficiently because i can type what i want to type but do i know what to type and what are the right words to type how do i go about searching how do i go about filtering all that is a huge skill so i'm glad you identified that strength in your team member the second quality that you talked about or or the skill that you talked about is to put the presentation together that is another skill which many of us may not have at least i do not have very good uh, ability to put a good presentation together because i used to do that when i was um, 10 years of age now i'm 18 so i've lost some of those skills so i need to keep in tune with times but the idea is how do you identify somebody in your team who can do that better than you like putting the presentation together what should be the material that should go into the slides for example if it is a powerpoint presentation if it is a flash presentation how do you then put the right set of images sounds and how do you mix all of that together how do you use multimedia to be able to put a very jazzy presentation together so that is again a skill so anup i'm glad you identified these two strengths in uh, your team members so that helped you do what my friend what was your goal when you started off of the project um uh, using a with electric material sure so for this the research on uh, on the internet helped as well as the ability of your other team member to put the presentation together helped is that correct yes okay so my question to you is what did you do first of all i just uh, convinced all my members in this ah. presentation and then i am also working uh, i collect all the information and just type there no it is this is right or this is wrong i don't think uh, we put them so you you know what you did uh, what you just said is a very good leadership quality the ability to identify the strengths and weaknesses in team members is a huge leadership quality do you know that and that is what you have demonstrated as as an individual now in your own team you know somebody is good at searching or research somebody is good at analysis somebody is good at presentation somebody is good at putting all of that together etc etc so that identification of strengths and skills and also to be able to influence and convince people to do what the goal is is a huge leadership strength that's a huge leadership quality did you just realize that you used for this call influencing ability or influencing skills that is a good quality of a leadership or a leader so i'm going to put that as the next leader skill which is influencing and that is a leader quality as well and while i am noting these down i'm sure you might want to note some of these skills down as well because when you step into organizations corporate organizations or even non governmental organizations or government organizations or social organizations what are the organizations you would use a lot of these skills because the very definition of an organization means more than me did you ever <laughs> give it a thought what is an organization an organization is a collection of members which have definite task uh, to achieve this task they work together absolutely absolutely uh, are you an mba school or a technology school i am from engineering ah okay good so uh, very correct the definition of an organization means how do i have an objective or a goal and i put together a lot of resources to achieve that objective and i do not do it alone the, that is the essence of an organization organization means to put everything together it's a coming together of organisms living and non living so as that 
you organize, you coordinate, you plan, you deliver, you execute, you control, you manage and you do all kinds of stuff to be able to get to that goal. That is what an organization means. Now my question to you folks, maybe not just your college, we will go across to another college perhaps. What is the first organization in your life that you come across? Any thoughts, any ideas? What is the first organization? My school and my family. Ha, huh, I think it's your family first. Because you were born into that family and your family is the first organization. School comes later. After school, your technical school or a management school or your college or whatsoever, the higher education comes next. What comes next is a work organization. A work organization could be various types. You could be working inside an organization while you are still at a college. You could be getting into a college, uh, into a work organization through a job that you would get at the campus. So that could be the next organization. The colleagues that you work with, the people that help you deliver your job. How many of us think when we get into organizations, we can actually work by ourselves and we can deliver everything? Is that possible? In my organization, for example, I will give you a very simple example. To sit here in IIT Bombay, there is a lot of team members of mine who have worked for me to make this happen. And this is not just within my company, for example, it is also my colleagues at IIT Bombay. For example, in order for me to sit here, there are at least four or five technicians or the people who know this technology. I do not know this technology at all as to how I am able to talk to you. So there is a host of people who are sitting here right next to me and right with me who have made that possible. So that is an organization. There is a lot of people within my own team in my own company who have helped me put some of these things together so that I can possibly be here today. So that is another organization. So organization comes across, we come across organizations at various levels. Family is our first organization and that is where we start knowing about leadership. So let me ask you, we will go to another institution. Thank you Anup and the person in the blue shirt. If you could sit down, you do not have to stand all the time. Thank you very much. So let us go across to another institution and let us see. Yes, 1061. So I would like to check with you, I would like to ask you folks, what is that first leadership quality that we see in our families? And My father, sir. Okay, father. What did you observe your father do which you think is a leadership quality? Why not mother, by the way? Mother is also a, one of the leader, but not fulfill for my characteristic. So only my father is a leader for me. Okay, and what leadership quality do, did your father demonstrate? Okay, anybody else? My mother is having a good quality, is leadership. Tell it's me. It's just of work from my, uh -huh. me and my brother. Get the work from me and my brother. Okay. He's a good leader and good team leader. I think he's a, having a more. I mean, uh, he's give the work to others. Wonderful, wonderful. So, what would that leadership quality be? The way you know it. Put a word to it, if you can. No, sir. What we know with my mother is no. What I know, what we do, and my mother is know that. Uh, know that my attitude. No, my, I mean, what I tell her. Mother knows everything that you, that you do and, the, and your mother also knows what you are good at. Is that correct? Is that what you are saying? Yes, sir. Okay, wonderful. So, the quality that your mother demonstrates is called teamwork. In my own words, the way I see it. Your mother keeps the family together. Your mother ensures that everybody in the house, in the family, is able to get to what they do the best. For example, if you are good at maths, for example, I am sure your mother would have helped you get to the right tuitions or right schools or the right teachers so that you are able to do well in your studies, for example. My mother did that. My mother was never, uh, she did not study beyond 10th standard and she is about 70 years old. And what she demonstrated while I was growing up as a child is an immense amount of sacrifice, an immense amount of understanding what the rest of the family members want. That is a big leadership quality. Everybody cannot demonstrate that. 
And a few of those skills that I wrote about this morning while I was thinking about my mother and my father is a very helpful attitude, a very attitude of sacrifice, for example. A mother demonstrates this quality. We talk about our fathers in a conventional, traditional setup. These days, I'm sure many of you sitting in that room will bo have both maybe your fathers and your mothers working uh, in some kind of jobs or roles or whatsoever in organizations. But when I was growing up in many of the families, the mothers used to be homemakers or as we used to call them housewives. We call them homemakers now. Now, the, one of the biggest characteristics or qualities of a mother as a leader is sacrifice. And that is something that I can learn from uh, my mother that I put normally to use even in corporate organizations. What does your father demonstrate in your family, for example, for any of you who may have seen some of those qualities? What did you learn from your father? Motivational, inspirations, how to tackle without any unawareness. Wonderful. How wonderful. to solve a problem. Wonderful. So I heard you say three or four things. Inspiration, motivation, expressing yourself and problem solving. I, I can't hear you. In unaware situations. Ah, they, in unknown situations or situations where you do not Correct. know what you need to do, but what you have learned from your father, as I understand, is how do you solve problems in situations where you do not know how to solve problems, for example. Correct? Yeah, correct. Wonderful, wonderful. So think about uh, some of these qualities. These are all qualities of leaders that we learn from home. These are all qualities that we learn from our families. You don't have to be in a corporate organization to learn these skills or traits or behaviors or characteristics or qualities. You learn them in your first institution that you come across in life and that is called a family, first organization. What did you learn from your school? Let's go to another institution. Let's go to another school and see what leadership qualities have you learned from your schools? Okay, Mahakal Institute of Technology, Ujjain, Madhya Pradesh. I see a lot of uh, people there, so thank you very much. The man in the white shirt. I'm calling you man and not boys and girls because you're already in college and you're going to be graduating into corporate organizations very soon. What's your name, my friend? Good morning, sir. Very good morning. Sir, Gauri. Tell me, Gauri, what, what, what are the leadership qualities that you have learned from your school? In my school life, sir, many times I showed my leadership qualities. Like uh, when I used to read in my school uh, from uh, 6 to 10, so many times I have become monitor of my class and uh, many times uh, when instructions come from my headmaster and uh, he told me that uh, you have to circulate this information in your class and you have to maintain the whole environment of your class. Anybody should not do mischief in your class and uh, any type of problem is arrived in your class, so please inform me. So this type of uh, leadership qualities I showed in my school and many times I have recognized my friends which have some qualities in sports and which have some qualities in the academics. So I have made two or three groups of the students who are in strong in sports and some are strong in the study. And if anyone needed help in the study, so they two or three persons group of students who are who are strong in the study help them, and the student who need help in the sports activity, that group help that student in the activity of sports. So many times I have put my put my skills on this activities. Sure, sure, wonderful, wonderful, good. So, what I hear you saying is you were the monitor of your class because you demonstrated leadership qualities. Now, obviously, the class mein sabse jyada shararti hota hai, usko monitor banate hai. I don't know, all of you in South India uh, institutions would not have uh, followed me what I just said. The most mischievous boy or girl in the class has always made the monitor. Sahu, is that you? Uh, were you very mischievous in your class? That's the reason they made you the monitor. No, sir. I mean, in my school life, I was always serious and sincere. And in my 
this college life i am also in serious condition sure, sure, always sure. i am serious I'm, i'm just joking so don't 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 worry i'm just joking so the quality that you learned by being a monitor is how to monitor and control it's a big leader and a manager quality in organizations why is that important because when you're managing a lot of resources which includes time money people energy a lot of things in organizations it is important to know how you are how those resources are getting utilized for example my budget to do a particular task or assignment or a project is say 200 rupees or 100 rupees i'm just taking an example it could be 100000 rupees or 100 million dollars as well if i have a budget of 100 rupees and i need to complete that project in 2 months with five people as my team i have to make sure that i spend not more than 100 rupees if i spend less that's wonderful not ask for a sixth person in my team because more number of people means more cost i need to complete this in 2 months if i exceed even one day there is a cost to it do you agree or do you agree for example yes, if a time is crossed a timeline is crossed there is a cost to that for example if i have to pay my five people for 2 months i have the budget for of 100 rupees for that but if i if the project extends to 2 uh, months and 5 days or 2 months and 1 day or 2 months or maybe 3 months then i have to pay these five people for one more month and i do not have the money for that so if you really look at it monitoring controlling planning budgeting executing and delivering all of these are very good leader qualities that you have learned from your school do you agree or do you agree i am agree with you sir yeah so we all are learning and demonstrating leadership qualities in our own lives both in the family at school and now in your higher education colleges etc so let me go across to another institution where i'm i'm going to ask you what are the leadership qualities like what we heard the first time with anup and uh, the other gentleman the kind of qualities that you have demonstrated as a leader is to be able to influence is to convince is to identify the strengths of people and how do you use those strengths to complete a project so in your colleges where you are right now what leadership qualities have you learned sir in my college i learned uh, how to manage different uh, kind of situations how to uh, manage uh, uh, people uh, who are not with us and uh, how to uh, know different uh, people's abilities uh, knowing their skills and uh, how to use them efficiently to uh, do a particular uh, task wonderful wonderful great so just as what we seen uh, the first uh, occasion or the first case first college where we had a project to do and one of the team members was good at research the other person was good at putting the presentation together the third person was good at analytics etc so likewise one of the leadership qualities that we demonstrate in our colleges is whenever we are doing a project whenever we are doing an assignment whenever we are submitting a, a project report uh, we do that very often in our colleges in our subjects don't we so the idea is what kind of a technical expertise do i bring in what kind of a subject matter knowledge do i bring in how do i put all of that together and then work towards the project thank you very much you have a question uh, my question is that uh, is it uh, required for a leader to be perfect in his skills sir it is required for a leader to be uh, perfect in all his skills good to know everything about his skills sure so i'll answer that question please sit down thank you how many of us have heard of superman it's a stupid question i'm sure everybody would have heard of superman how many of us have seen a superman movie i can see um, uh, some of us in this room at least i see a raise of hand so i'm assuming everybody has seen a superman movie superman means superman can do everything superman is the most perfect person or perfect being 
I don't know if he is human being, he's a cartoon character, but at the end of the day, a superman is expected to know everything, do everything, learn everything, and uh, the most perfect creature on earth. In order for us to be supermen, we need to be wearing the red underwear over our blue suit and have the cloak at the back of our bodies and then do this, fly. Can we do that? Okay, maybe we can wear a red underwear over a blue suit, that is possible. Put our cloak at the back of our bodies, that is also possible. But can we fly? Maybe like this, what the superman does. So the thing is, the reason why I am talking about superman is just in, on the lighter note. But on a serious note, everybody cannot do everything, that is for sure. And everybody, even if we wanted to, cannot be the most perfect in all the skills that are required for a leader or a manager in an organization. That is the beauty. The beauty is, I do not know everything, I cannot do everything, that is the reason I have a team. That is the reason I have a team both at my peer level, peer means uh, people who are at the same role, designation, grade, may be taking more money at home than I am. But the beauty of that team is, we all are experts in what we do the best. For example, in my team, in my organization, there is an HR head, human resources head. This human resources head is required to bring the people focus into the way the organization does the business. Is he the CEO of the organization? No. Can he be the CEO of the organization? Perhaps, yes. We have a CEO. The human resources head reports to the CEO. What does the CEO do? The CEO has the skills to bring all these resources together. People, finance, marketing, operations, legal, compliance, risk, controls, and a host of other things that he is best aware of, the CEO. The CFO, CFO, Chief Financial Officer, he is the person who knows money. CHRO or the person that I was just talking to you about, Chief Human Resources Officer. CMO, Chief Marketing Officer. CLO, Chief Legal Officer, he is a lawyer. Can everybody be everything? I don't think so. Can the CEO be everything? No. What does the CEO do? The CEO brings in the qualities of a leader where he is able to coordinate all these people. Because in an organization, you need to have somebody who brings all these things together. That is a quality that the CEO has. The chief human resource officer is good at people. Chief Finance Officer is good at money. Chief Marketing Officer is good at advertising. Chief Legal Officer is a lawyer. He is good at making the company work in the most legally productive way. So, to answer your question, my friend, can one person be good at everything? Never. Can one person be good at bringing all of these things together? Definitely. Why not? Does that answer your question, my friend? Yes, sir. So, the question to you then, my friend, is do you want to be the Superman? Wear, no, your, wear your red pants over your blue underwear or whatever? <laughs> or do you want to be somebody who can have a peripheral knowledge? You can have a knowledge about all of these things and then you have the skills to bring all of these things together. That is also an important thing. Yes, sir. Sir, my friend, have a good day. Thank you. Yes sir. yes, sir. Sir, what should be an approach of a leader that uh, if his or her teammates are not uh, responding in a perfect cooperative way in a team? And for example, if I have a group of five people of which uh, three are active members who are participating in the event or uh, the project or whatever we are working on, and of uh, those five members, two are inactive, uh, which are not cooperative or uh, they are not uh, helping the other members of the team as well. Sure. So, what should be my approach as a leader or uh, someone's approach 
so that the uh, whole team functions in a very systematic way and the project uh, completes uh, successfully. Sure. So, what's your name, please? Uh, I'm Yash Soni. So, Yash, have you faced a situation like this in your life until now? Sir, unless till now I have not worked on such a project, but uh, I feel that if sometime in my life in future, yeah, if some situation arrives, yeah. then uh, what should I do? Yeah, okay. So it's a more future-based question. Yes, you sir. haven't experienced a situation like this. So in my yes, life, for example, I have experienced this multiple number of times. So my question to you, and the more questions you ask, the more questions I'm going to ask you. So the question that I have for you, Yash, is why do people not cooperate? What is the reason behind that? Sir, if they are not interested. They may not be interested, number one. What else? And uh, if they don't have knowledge about that particular... Wonderful. So, they may not have the knowledge or the skill about doing that task. What else? Yes, sir. They don't want to cooperate. They don't want to cooperate is what you said. But why would they not want to cooperate? So, you have told me two reasons. One, they may not have the interest and they may not have the skill. What else? Sir, and uh, one more thing that uh, they might not uh, like to see me as a leader. Okay. Ah, so they may hate you. Okay, hate is a very strong word, so they may not like you. <laughs> okay. Yes, <laughs> they might be interested if uh, they were the leader of that particular. Ah, okay, so they want to be the leader and uh, they do not like you as the leader. So, yes. that is one. Yes. What else? What else? <laughs> there is a very big reason why people do not cooperate. Uh, you, of course, there are. There's no skill. There's no interest, and they may not like you as a leader. They want to be the leader themselves. What else? The one of the biggest things that I have experienced in my life, uh, why people do not want to cooperate, is also because they do not see an incentive. What that means in English is, I'm doing this job, but what is in it for me? Why am I doing it? What is the benefit? What is the incentive? Am I going to get cash? Am I going to get uh, money at the end of it? Am I going to get fame? Am I going to get motivation or promotion, for example? Am I going to be, if I cooperated with Yash uh, in the next project, will he give me an opportunity to, you know, uh, get promoted to uh, being a leader or being a team leader, for example? So people look at various things to demonstrate or, or cooperativeness or camaraderie or teamwork or whatever you would want to call it. And as you rightly said, people may genuinely not be interested. And why would people not be interested? Because they do not see a benefit and because they do not have the right skill to be able to do it. How many of us know how to drive a car, for example? Let me ask this question. Yes, do you know how to drive a car? No, sir, I am not trained. Okay, so not trained. Train means what? You do not have the knowledge, you do not have the skill. But yes, if you had the knowledge and if you had the skill, would you be interested in driving a car? Of course. So, here's the deal. Now, you do not know how to drive a car because, or not of lack of interest, because, but a lack of skill and knowledge. Yes, sir. And the person at the back who is raising his hand, so let me ask him this question. So, do you know how to drive a car, my friend? Yes, I can drive the car. You, you can drive a car. But when you started learning how to drive a car, why did you start learning to drive a car in the first place? What is because, it? Uh, that yeah. was that was my necessity and that was my interest. So, if I learn the car, then I can complete lots of tasks. Wonderful. So, you learned the car because you saw an incentive. You were motivated to learn the car because that would save you time. That would save you money, yes, maybe, for all that you know. And it takes you from point to point at your own comfort and convenience. So, Yash, to your question, we all learn to do things or we all learn to cooperate in teams if we see an incentive. That, that is the biggest motivation for people. Now, the question is, as a leader, what do you do to provide that incentive to people? And everybody may not want the same incentive. In a team of five people, somebody may want money. Somebody may want promotion. Somebody might just want to impress the girlfriend, the next girl in the team, for example, or boyfriend for that matter. So, a lot of people work in teams and try and cooperate for various reasons. 
or not cooperate for various reasons as well. So the question as a leader is how are you able to identify what motivates what person? The question is how do you know kisko kya chahiye? Friends, I am from Delhi. I have lived all my life in Delhi. I speak absolutely chaste Telugu at home. That is my mother tongue. Because I am from Delhi, I talk in Hindi. I love in Urdu and I drive in Punjabi. I can speak a bit of Tamil, some bit of Kannada because I go to Bangalore very often. Chill Madi, Enjoy Madi. So these are the words that I have picked up <laughs> from uh, Bangalore auto rickshaws. Then I can speak uh, obviously some element of Bengali. I do not know if we have any colleges from the east, but uh, if we do, I can try Bengali as well. But the reason why I am talking about this is because English is not our native language. All of us, including me, I started speaking in English only when I got into work. Even in college, I was not very comfortable speaking in English. So, the reason why I am saying that is whenever we talk, whenever we stand up, speak in a language that you are comfortable with. Do not worry, it does not have to be English. As I said, I only have started and maybe speak the English that I do only for the last 25 years while working with organizations. Before that, at home I speak Telugu, I, with my friends I speak in Hindi and uh, when I am driving, I speak to everybody else on the road in Punjabi. Do you do that as well in multiple languages? So let me ask you this stupid question, what language do you think in? Have you ever thought about that? Hindi sir, actually we feel comfortable in Hindi because the environment allow me to talk with others in Hindi. So ah. they also feel very comfortable in Hindi in area. Yes. But so it depends on reason to reason. Wonderful. But on this forum, in this room, we have a lot of colleges in Tamil Nadu, we have a lot of colleges in uh, I think Andhra Pradesh, in Mumbai as well, as well as a uh, host of other cities and towns. I do not think everybody is comfortable thinking in Hindi or talking in Hindi as well. So. The thing is, please be comfortable if somebody can translate that into English for me, that is also fine. But if you want to talk in Hindi or Tamil or whatsoever, please feel comfortable, do not worry. So let me summarize or recap what we have talked about until now. I introduced myself, I took you through a bit of a journey of my own life initially in my career, how I transitioned from operations to training. Then I talked to you about how that change is possible and I have not yet talked to us about change as a big quality of a leader. I will talk to you about that. So I keep promising you that I will definitely do it. Second communication is what I said uh, is we will talk about uh, as a quality of a leader. I just now, just before I came back here into this room, I said uh, communication in any language is absolutely valid and important. Now. Obviously, communication itself is a big ocean. In communication, there is a lot of other sub skills that one needs to learn. For example, listening skills. This is the biggest of communication skills that we often ignore. How many of us think we are good listeners? We all think good communication is about talking. Of course, it is a good communication skill. But amongst other communication skills, if you look at it, Listening is one of the biggest skills. Next week, I will be married 20 years with my wife. Of course, one wife, two kids is what I have. Now, the question is, have I been a great listener whenever my wife talks, for example? And men learn this, actually. Um, when they get married, they become very good listeners. All of you are students in colleges. I am hoping you do not have, uh, you are not married yet and maybe you might have your boyfriends, girlfriends in the same institution or elsewhere. But test this skill out. I am telling you. Just test it next time your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your partner when they talk to you. Are you really listening? Now the question is, how do you listen? It is always good to say listening skills are very good or it is important to have listening skills. But how do you listen? You listen with your entire body, entire person. What that means in English is I not only listen to the words, I also listen to the facial expressions, hand movements, 
body gestures because a lot of people talk with their entire person they don't only talk in words so the ability to listen to what is being said and more importantly what is not being said is a very huge skill or a quality of a good leader good leaders often sit back step back stand back and listen so that is one of the biggest communication skills that you can develop not only talking but also listening the next part about communication and i often say this about communication is <clears throat> it doesn't have to be restricted by a language you can talk in any language communicate in any language you can still get your point across the point or the objective of communication is to get your point across and at the same time receive a response back it's like a message the message travels from the sender to the receiver so let me demonstrate this to you so this is the message there's a sender and there is a receiver and the message travels across through a medium you can see this i hope yes you can so the, when the message travels from the sender to the receiver the receiver receives that message and at the same time the receiver acknowledges the receipt of the message how does the receiver do that the receiver nods his head okay samajh mein aa raha hai i can understand now the receiver is sending feedback to the sender so the sender understands that the receiver has received the message more often than not what happens in communication if the sender means something and the receiver receives something else often happens in marriages like mine i have been married for the last 20 years as i said and often times i mean something and when i send that across to my wife she receives that to be a different message and vice versa i'm just joking don't worry it doesn't happen in my life anymore we are married 20 years now so the thing is listening as i said is a very good or important communication skill and as you would normally see this is a skill which many of us do not really practice very uh, or are not conscious about this so if one starts with developing that conscious consciousness about hey am i listening well am i getting the message am i sending the message back to the sender or the talker or the speaker that i'm listening intently listening to him or her that is a good quality there are many other communication sub skills that we can talk about and uh, perhaps that might require about another 4 hours but the point is in leadership qualities communication to the best of my understanding is the topper it tops the list communication skills or an ability to communicate well is like an airline ticket i'm sure many of you would have flown an in an airline or an aircraft the airline ticket allows you to get inside the aircraft but whether you travel business class first class or economy is determined by your ability to communicate well so let me say this again communication skills everybody has them everybody each one of us in this room it's like an airline ticket it allows us to get or board the flight but good communication skills are those which then differentiate between whether i fly economy business or first class puri ma bujhe chen understood so what i mean by this is if you are wanting to develop yourself as a good leader please develop and work or keep working on your ability to communicate well so that is a good quality of a leader i have spoken to you about communication so let me tick this off and i'll of course take any questions that you might have about communication or any of these other qualities that i'm talking about the third thing that i talked to you about uh, was persistence persistence is that quality of a leader where you have a very dogged focus 
وہ کتا جو ہوتا ہے کتا اور ڈاگ اور نائی ان تامل فار ایگزامپل آلویز ہیز دس فوکس یو ہیو ٹو ڈو اٹ سو یو ہیو ٹو ڈو اٹ کم واٹ میں یو ول یو ول کنٹینیو ٹو بی فوکسڈ آن دیٹ یو ول پٹ آل یور ریسورس اسکلس آن دیٹ اینڈ ایونچولی یو ول ایمرج وینا سو دیٹ اکاؤنٹیبلٹی دیٹ اونرشپ دیٹ آئی ٹاک اباؤٹ ان مائی ویڈیو کمس فرام پرسسٹنس دی فورتھ کوالٹی دیٹ آئی ٹاک ٹو یو اباؤٹ از ایس ایم ای اور سبجیکٹ میٹر ایکسپرٹیز وچ ایسینشلی مینس آئی ایم گڈ ایٹ واٹ آئی برنگ ٹو دی ٹیبل آئی ایم گڈ ایٹ مائی ٹیکنیکل اسکلس آئی ایم گڈ ایٹ دی نالج دیٹ آئی پوزیس اباؤٹ دی ٹیکنالوجی دیٹ آئی ایم ورکنگ ان ویدر اٹ از آئی ٹی ویدر اٹ از سول انجینئرنگ ویدر اٹ از میکینیکل انجینئرنگ اٹ جسٹ ڈزنٹ میٹر واٹ ایور دی فیلڈ دیٹ آئی ہیو چوزن آئی ایم دی بیسٹ ایٹ دیٹ ٹوڈے فار ایگزامپل ان مائی اون لائف آفٹر ہیونگ اسپینڈ دیز ٹوینٹی فائیو ایئرس اور واٹس ایور آئی ڈیفینیٹلی ووڈ لائک ٹو بلیو اینڈ Obviously, when I sit here in an institution like this, it's absolutely a testimony to the fact that I'm talking to a lot of whiz kids like you and I'm here at uh, an institution like IIT Bombay. It's an accomplishment for me personally and professionally. So, in my chosen space, I definitely do think I uh, would want to be counted in the top 10% in this space. If I can be top 5 or top 1%, definitely that helps. But the idea is, if I can believe that I am in my top 10%, I would love to uh, contribute a lot back uh, to uh, what I've gained from my professional experience. Today, I teach in a lot of business schools. I teach in, I interact with a lot of young folks like you, for example. It gives me a lot of energy. It also tells me that this white hair is only a L'Oreal dye. and i can definitely be able to interact with a good number of you and perhaps your language and try and contribute through my own experience back to maybe how i can influence you how i can um, motivate you to um, take on good careers in life and progress on those careers so that's my aim in life and i think the subject matter expertise that i bring to the table and that is the crux of what we were talking about please be good at what you do the idea is then take yourself from good to great if you are good at it obviously you are it's that airline ticket that i was talking about if you are great at it you will not fly economy you will fly business class so think about whether you want to be good in your subject matter expertise or do you want to be great so that could be a differentiator in the leader quality that you can bring about for yourself The influencing, one of my friends in one of the colleges added, is one of the skills. The first leader quality that I talked to you about, which I said I'll talk about in detail in a while, is called change. Now, my question to us, and obviously I will not be able to receive responses here, but in your own rooms, I would like for you to raise hands. And I would like for some of the institutions to tell me back, How many people raise their hands to this question? So the question is to this. Okay, so. Okay. Sure, so I have sent this question across to you. Who likes change? So I would like to see you pull a yes or a no to this one. We need to wait two minutes. Okay, we will wait for some time before I get some results here. So I, I love, I request each of the institutions, each of the colleges to, okay, that's a resounding yes and nobody says no, which is good. Okay, I, I don't know which is good or bad actually. Let me not comment on this till I see some more. So I have 17 responses, 20 responses, 23 responses, 26, 27. We'll stop the poll at 30, 29. Okay, good. Thank you. So everybody likes change, which is a good sign. Let me admit that. 35 responses, everybody. 
Okay, so I'll go back to these to, to you once we come back from the break. But here is the deal. Here is the deal. Here is what happens normally in life. You're all lying. You're all lying because nobody likes change except a wet baby. Only a wet baby likes change. You know why? Susu ho gaya, potty ho gaya, so the mother has to come and change the nappy. So only a wet child or a wet baby likes change. Everybody else is lying that we like change. I would like my today to be exactly the same as yesterday or my tomorrow to be exactly like today. On a serious note, nobody likes change. Perhaps I keep reading these WhatsApp jokes and also the only other person who likes change is the bus conductor because he does not have change. So you have to give him change. So the question is if we do not like change. now. How can we make this change a much more positive and a productive way for us to deal with? So here is the deal. <clears throat> when change happens, typically we all go through this beautiful curve. It is called the Kubler-Ross curve of change management. I do not know if you, any of you would have read about or seen this earlier, but this pertains to every aspect of life. Whether you are working in an organization, in a school or you are in a family, when you get married, when you have children, so change is happening all the time and change is the only damned constant in this world. It is the only constant thing that keeps happening. You may like it, you may not like it, your tomorrow will never be the same as today. And particularly the pace at which change is happening. For example, I was just analyzing the other day, my father or my father's generation, my father is 80 years old. He is probably the generation which has seen the maximum amount of change in life. When he was born, there was no electricity in his village. Then the, the bulb, the electric bulb came into his life. After that, he used to go walking to uh, quite a distance to school. And then eventually, he discovered that there is a bus or a cycle or something that he can take as a vehicle for example. Then he discovered he moved to us, the villages were changing into towns, the towns were changing into cities and there was a lot of hustle bustle and a lot of other shift or change kept happening. And the biggest change I think he saw in his life was when he used to work on a Remington typewriter. He, he was a government servant and he retired about 20 years ago. So his office told him from tomorrow onwards or next month onwards, we will stop typing on these Remington typewriters and we will get Microsoft Word or keyboard and whatever else not. If you see this, this is the keyboard that he probably started working which does not look like a typewriter at all. So that was another big change that he saw. Then he suddenly started seeing these good old telephones going away and mobile phones coming in. Then he today sees internet and everything is at the tip of his fingers. He does not have to go to the bank to update his passbook anymore. Many of you would not even know that standing in huge queues to book railway tickets or airline tickets is something that uh, even I have done in my life. Many of my, uh, my parents generation have done in life. Maybe some of your parents would have done that in, your, in their lives as well. So the thing is change is happening all around us. And change is happening at a much faster pace today than it was ever in the past. So what do you do about it? The first thing that normally happens when you are talking about change is, how many of us have experienced this? Change is happening for Sharma ji, not for me. Sharma ji can deal with the change, but I do not have to deal with the change, it is not for me. Or maybe you say, yeah, everybody is going through this change, but I do not have to go through this change. I will continue to be comfortable and convenient about how I used to deal with things yesterday. Or the third thing, why me? Why do I have to deal with the change, etc., etc. Then eventually, after you are done with that, you, you normally experience anger, frustration. Why the hell do I have to deal with this new technology? Yesterday I was comfortable with Microsoft uh, Word, why do I now have to deal with an Apple um, a laptop or a computer or a Apple software for example. Then you start bargaining. 
what happens in bargaining there, there could be positive bargaining or a negative bargaining negative bargaining would be hey if i have to deal with this i won't do that so in organizations typically this happens if somebody has to take on a new responsibility or a new assignment or a task you end up saying hey you know what if i have to do that i will stop doing what i'm doing or a positive bargaining could be if i have to leave something or stop doing something how can i start doing something new so that could be a very positive bargaining and eventually you start accepting the change and when you accept the change you move on now the question is how long do you spend at each of these phases some of us may spend minutes some of us may spend hours some of us may, may spend days months together but then the question is how quickly do we move on from denial to really accepting that change and walking ahead in life so i leave us with this thought i leave us with this change management process Thank you very much. Take care.